Hey guys, it is Nick the Booksmith, and I am back with that tutorial I promised, or or random tip I should say. So I, you know, like all of us, <laughs> I waste time in the black hole of Pinterest, um, especially at night if I can't get to sleep. Sometimes I'll just scroll through, and I love to look for recipes because uh, being trained as a pastry chef, you know, you're always looking for anyway sidebar <laughs> but I see all this beautiful gorgeous decorative spine stitching for book binding and I've seen some tutorials on YouTube some some not extremely complicated um, spine stitching so that when you're sewing in your signatures it shows instead of just straight stitches it's got I mean they're there's hearts and daisy chains and arrows and all kinds of beautiful, beautiful things. Um, my problem is, is that I have the dexterity of, I don't know, a T-Rex. And usually by the time I get to stitching in my signatures, my brain just kind of, <laughs> I go into like auto mode. I just... That's just, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. So I've been thinking of a way to do like a false spine stitching. I most of the time do a hidden binding and I will put a link in the description bar um, to at least one very good tutorial to do that. Um, there's so many tutorials on how to do that on YouTube. I don't think I need to um, redo that. Because you, I mean, it's all, anyway, I'll put a link. Hmm. I'll put a link. Anyway, um, so because I do the hidden stitching on the inside, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to do some sort of a false stitching on the spine to mimic that beautiful stitching when people stitch in their signatures? So some reason my brain cannot like, okay, so if, if I'm going in this hole to in this signature, I need to come out that hole in the spine. It's like it's like it's like taxes. It uh, my brain just automatically turns into scrambled eggs, and I lose um, all hand-eye coordination, and um, I turn into a blubbering idiot in a fetal position in the corner. So, so maybe we could try this. So I have um, taken just for um, just for like showing purposes demonstration purposes so I'm so articulate again <laughs> I've taken a cereal box and because I know a lot of you like to use um, and recycle and upcycle boxes and um, the size doesn't matter because this is just for demonstration um, this happens to be like a, two, a little over two inch spine. I just wanted to make it big enough so that so that you could see it properly. And so I've kind of, as you can see, sketched on, oh, let me see if I can get it in there, like a grid. Can you see that? I kind of stitched on, I mean, sketched on a grid. Now you wouldn't want to do this, the all the pencil marks on your real spine you would want to do this on a template and then put the template over the top of the spine to make your holes and then refer to your template um, with the pencil lines as you're sewing in the real spine because you don't want to draw on your spine, right? So um, I kind of went ahead and did a rudimentary um, what I thought would look kind of pretty. Now, you crazy genius, brilliant, talented people out there run with this. Um, like I said, I'm not doing anything complicated for um, demonstration purposes because I thought that would just be too, you know, why? Um, there are templates, I think, online that you can get and then you can size them in your computer as you wish and use those to make your holes in your spine and then refer to the template on, on where the stitches go. But after you decorate your cover, however you like to do that, whether it's, 
it's paper or you do some sort of a beautiful hand painted, I don't know, whatever it is you want to do. That is when you would put the holes in and pretend like you're sewing in signatures, but you ain't. You're not going to sew in those signatures yet because mama ain't got time for that. You're going to do a fake prettiness in your spine and then you're going to sew your signatures onto a false spine and then attach that on the inside. Are you feeling me? Okay. So what I've done is I went ahead and poked my holes and you can see the, the pencil marks on kind of what I'm going for. Yes. And you can go as precise or as primitive as you wish, um, depending on the kind of book you, you're going for and the kind of look you want. Um, like I said this morning, I have the dexterity of a T-Rex, so um, this is going to be very, very primitive. <laughs> so, and another thing, you can use at this point, if you have hand-painted <clears throat> your book and you have a specific color combination that you're going for, you could get out some beautiful um, embroidery thread. Let me reach. Let me reach. So, I used to do a lot of cross stitch back in the day. I mean, we're talking, we're talking two decades ago. And this is the embroidery floss I still have from, seriously, two decades ago. So, I've got like every color imaginable almost to man. So, wouldn't it be gorgeous? And you could, you could switch it up. I mean, you could do... Oh, dropping things. You could do the X's in one color and the straight stitches in another. Get crazy. You could bead them as you're stitching through. You could add sew in buttons. You could sew in charms and bangles and whatever. Wouldn't that be seriously, seriously cool? And I so want to do this at some point. Um... I've been, like I said, I've been doing a lot of hidden stitching because I've been doing the spines with the little ridges in them. So there's really no room to stitch on top of that. But I want to be getting back in more of some of the spine stitching. And this is probably how I'm going to do it. So pay attention because you're learning with me. Um, I've never done this before. So, you know, yeah, that's the disclaimer. I'm just going to use some twine. And this, this simple twine came from this huge um, spool and it used to be like this big. So it's from Military Surplus. I don't know what they used it for. I don't care. So I bought it at, my, my husband bought it, Military Surplus, many eons ago. And he came in the other day and he goes, what happened to my twine? I go, well, it's right there. He goes, but it used to be huge. I was like, yeah, made a lot of books, man. So anyway. So I think that's kind of a cool idea that you could use the embroidery floss. And this stuff is tough. This stuff is tough. So I think it would be real pretty and all the colors and beads and uh, the possibilities, my friends, are endless. So the good thing about this kind of thing, and I did look on, I did look around to see if there were any any tutorials on this and I didn't find any that doesn't mean there aren't any huh, because there certainly could be I just didn't see any so I thought well I'll go ahead and do one and um, it's really the idea because you guys will run with whatever you run with but this is just the idea of what I'm thinking um, I tied I tied a knot in the end of course and put it on a large needle and then the good thing is about this is that you can start and stop wherever you want. If you want to do a row of orange and then a row of white and then a row of chartreuse and then, you know, it doesn't matter. Just yay, go for it. So, like I said, it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you stop because you're not going to see any of the workings on the inside because you're going to be sewing over that. So this is it, guys. Just basically sew over your um, the holes that you made to create a beautiful pattern on your spine after you've painted it or covered it in a gorgeous paper or 
you know, whatever. You could do this on a soft cover book too as well. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter um, as long as you have something sturdy enough to hold your stitches. So, yeah. So this this is, this is sorry phone. So this is basically the idea. Basically, um, I'm not gonna sew this whole thing in front of you because y'all get bored. <clears throat> And you would stop watching me. <laughs> and so I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep on trucking. And I'm just going to, and this isn't going to turn into anything. I'm, I'll take out the string and recycle the board or use it in something else. But, um, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> what, um, what I thought I'd do for a, a minute or two is, um, a lot of people have been asking some questions questions just about me so I thought maybe I'd answer I don't know some questions I didn't write anything down I'm gonna have to remember the questions you've asked me um I did get the question um from a lovely lady <clears throat> yesterday that if I have asking if I have another job um no at this point I do not have another job um Etsy is my job i that's what I'm doing right now, full time. Um, I have some just, this is, might be TMI. I just have some health issues that would make it difficult for me right now to um, have a job like a nine to five at a desk kind of a thing. So, um, so this works out better for me that I can work um, from my studio and I have internet access here. Um, I've got all my supplies in here. And so, yeah, so there's that. Let's see, what else about me? Um, I am married. Um, we are about to have our 27th anniversary. That is a two and a seven. <laughs> I was a child bride. <laughs> I was born at 10. No, I mean, married at 10. No, no, I wasn't. I was not married at 10. Uh, I did marry young, but I was not married at 10. Uh, but I, I like to tell people I was. Um, I have a daughter. Um, just one kid. We have a daughter. And let's see. Um, oh, somebody asked me what kind of music I like. So, <clears throat> I'm, I like a lot of things. And, and I guess that's like the common answer that people give you, right? Oh, I like everything. I like a little bit of everything. Well, this is, this is true and not true. Um, I do like a lot of things. Um, my favorite, I love the older alternative. So we're talking, um, like... Well, Seether is still around. I love Seether. I love the old saliva. Um, a perfect circle and tool is like my ultimate. Maynard Keenan is a genius. Love Maynard Keenan. Um, but tool is probably, probably my favorite band. Um, so I'm not saying I um, hate country music. But if we were ever on a trip together and you were driving and you turned on country music, I would probably roll down the window and bail from your moving car. It's nothing personal against you because I still love you. I am just not... <laughs> that sounds so awful. Um, I am not a country music fan. And you're thinking, oh, it's because you're a city girl. You grew up in the city. You never, you never learned to appreciate, you know, the Garth, the Reba. Well, let me tell you a little something about me. I grew up, this is, I mean, we've lived in several homes and we've lived in several states. But I've never lived in the city. Um, I grew up in the country for 99% of my life. There was a short stint we lived in Phoenix for a while, but I was little. So my grandfather had a ranch 
in the southwestern corner of New Mexico in the Gila River Valley and his land backed up to BLM. Now, if you don't know what BLM land is, that is government land. It's the Bureau of Land Management. And it went to the Arizona border. My, the school I went to, there were 17 kids in my junior class. Three of the boys went to rodeo college. So I was more country <laughs> than most people would ever dream of being. <laughs> Where I'm from, if somebody wore a cowboy hat and cowboy boots, it's because they had cows. It's not because they were making some fashion statement. <laughs> it, it's because they worked on a ranch. Um, the ranches around us were not acres, they were sections. And if you don't know what a section is, you ain't country. A section is, just look it up. I'll just let you look it up. You can Google that. Um, so I am country. Um, we had livestock. We raised them. Um, I'm a country girl. I'm a country girl. So that being said, um, still do not like country music. Um, never owned a pair of cowboy boots in my life. I didn't have cows. I don't know. It's just a thing. I didn't, I didn't have any cows. We raised other livestock, but I just never, anyway, anyway, so a little something about me. Don't like country music. Boy, long story short, right? <laughs> Um, but like I said, it's nothing personal. I, actually, a lot of my friends, like probably more than half of them, like adore country music. So it's, I mean, it's not, it's not a personal thing against anybody. I don't hold it against you if you like country music. I just happen to, um, dislike it for the most part. There were a few songs like Johnny Cash. Gotta love some Johnny Cash. But he wasn't like twangy country stuff. I don't know. But and there are some, and like um, there's some Patsy uh, Patsy Klein stuff that I like. I guess that's all old school, right? But um, oh, sorry, phone. I should have turned that off. So anyway, so there's that. <laughs> Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else did they ask? Uh, well, maybe that's it for this episode. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember, but okay. So I've gone up, I went across here and then I went up along here and then I'm coming back down and I'll probably weave back and well, I probably won't finish it. Well, maybe I will and then I'll take a picture anyway, but don't you think that would be pretty? Um, if you use a butcher type twine, you could absolutely dye it with um, different inks, um, distress inks and, and Lindy's sprays and all those kinds of things, tattered angels, all that kind of stuff. You could, you could dye it to be whatever kind of color that you like. And if you, um, if you go ahead and dip dye it in something and then you lay it out flat to dry, then kind of ball it up, or you could use a hair dryer or a heat gun, kind of ball it up and take some of your dye again and try to concentrate it a little bit more and make it a little bit darker and just kind of sprinkle it so that on your dry one time dyed twine so that when it dries again, there will be dark and light spots throughout. Does that make sense? So um, that would be pretty and then it would be all kind of modeled and you could even go over the top with a different color dye which would be really pretty too and then you would have like a multicolor type thing. So um, so yeah, so like I said, I know you people will um, run with this idea. Um, this is very, this is a very simple rudimentary stitch but I have seen some wicked complicated gorgeous things out there that I think you could you could figure it out and you can mimic it. Like I said, I will put a link in the bottom for a hidden um, stitching binding um, tutorial. I have one in mind 
that um, I've linked people to before because it's excellent. It's excellent and it's very comprehensive. And so I think you'll I think you'll like that one. Um, I think is that it? Is that it? I think that's it. I think I'll let you go. Um, this video is probably already 20 minutes and I've rambled on along enough and I think you get the general idea. Yes, yes, yes. If you have any questions, please ask down in the comment section and I will do my best. Like I said, this is the first time I've attempted this, so I'm really, um, I'm learning as I go along and I'm sure you will be too. Um, so I might not know the answer to your question, which is common. <laughs> it's not a, it's not an abnormal thing for me not to know an answer to your question. So, um, so go with it guys. And if you do this and you put it on Instagram or you make a YouTube video or something, oh, tag me. I want to see it. I want to see your beautiful creativity. I want to see what you come up with. Um, so yeah. Okay guys, I love you so much. You guys are so supportive and so cool and just the best. I have the best subscribers on YouTube. You guys rock. And um, I really, really, truly do appreciate that from the bottom of my little wicked heart. So you guys have a great day, great weekend. And I am going to be slipping in a Etsy journal this weekend before I start my custom orders for the next week. So be looking for a journal this weekend. So it's been started. So maybe I'll be have it done by the morning, by Saturday morning, which would be the 11th. I don't know. Daylight savings time starts. I better do something to commemorate, right? Um, <laughs> that was random. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go. Bye, guys.